Let's get to aligning mirror one. Remember, we just need to make sure that mirror one is set at a 45 degree angle. Let's get started. So now we're gonna power the machine on for the first time. So let's start by opening up the lid so we can get a good view of the gantry and laser head. If it's not already, go ahead and pull it at least so it's in the middle of the machine. Just know that when the machine's turned on, you can no longer move it manually. But we'll wanna start it in the middle. As the machine powers on, the gantry should move towards the back and the laser head towards the right. If it does not do that and begins to move in a different direction, turn the machine off and give us a call. We'll also want to go ahead and make sure that the laser tube is filling up with water correctly. As I power the machine on, these things are going to happen simultaneously. So you might want to grab somebody to help you out here, or you just have to be quick about it and watch both things happen at the same time. Before we turn the ignition on, we'll want to make sure the emergency stop button is not pushed in. To disengage it, we will turn the emergency stop button clockwise and it should pop out. All that's left to do is to turn the ignition on and turn the key counterclockwise about a quarter turn. First, we gotta remove the access panel. And we're gonna remove this back rear panel as well with your Phillips screwdriver. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the first acrylic target out of the toolbox. Uh, that's got a number one engraved on it with an arrow pointing up to show which way the target will be mounted into the machine. The back side of the target has some pieces of double-sided tape on it. And on the front side, we're gonna be putting a piece of blue painter's tape on it. So we'll grab our painter's tape, and we're just gonna need one piece about the size of the target. If it's a little bigger, that's okay. And we're gonna place it over the front to cover that target. So that's what it should look like. Again, the back has the double-sided tape on it. Uh, now we need to remove the backing on that double-sided tape. And that's pretty much these two white pieces of paper. So now we're gonna take that target and mount it right on the mirror two bracket so that we're covering mirror two. And that basically just go straight in front of that bracket and it sits flush with the top so you can run your finger across the top until it's even and if you got any leftover tape you could even fold it across the top as well as you do that so you want to make sure that you push the target back against this bracket so it's nice and square and then it's flush across the top so now we're going to press the up arrow key on the keypad and jog the gantry all the way to the back. All right, so we're gonna close the lid first. And then we're going to just lightly press the pulse button. We just really wanna press pulse briefly. We don't wanna hold it down. That'll leave the laser on and it'll create a really heavy burn and melt through our tape and our target. So I'm gonna just press pulse quickly. Make sure nobody's got their hands in the machine anywhere. So next, we'll remove the target. And we'll wanna take note of where the burn mark is in relation to the crosshairs in the back. Now this is going to be our reference point. So it's really important that we get a good photo of this, but we wanna be able to see the crosshairs coming through the blue painter's tape. That way we know where the burn mark is. Um, so we're going to take a picture of this because this is going to be our reference point that we'll use moving forward. It's real important when taking this picture that you have some light coming through the back of the target so that it illuminates the target through the blue tape. And you also want to make sure that your picture is in focus before you take it and that the target is right side up the same way it was in the machine 
when you shot it. So now we're going to move the gantry all the way to the front of the machine by pressing the down arrow on the keypad. Uh, so now we've got our first burn mark. Uh, we're going to remove the piece of tape, make sure we take any other little remnants of the first piece of tape off of there. And we're going to put a brand new piece of tape on the target. Again, just like before, we're going to cover up the target on the front side. And if it hangs over a little bit, no big deal. So next, we're gonna mount the target right back on where it was before. Again, with the number one and the arrow pointing up. And we're gonna make sure we push it flush against this back wall. And we'll make sure that it's flush along the top here too. Again, if you have extra tape, you can just bend it over the top. But it should be nice and flush up top here and on the bottom as well. So now with the gantry all the way to the front, we're ready to take our second shot. So again, we're gonna lightly press the pulse button and deliver a burn to the tape. So now we're gonna remove the target and compare it to that first picture we took of the first burn. So I'm gonna hold it up to the light. I'm gonna pull my phone out and compare the two. And as I can see now, the second shot is way off. Uh, one thing to point out here, we're not trying to get both shots to hit perfectly center. Uh, what I'm looking for here is that the second shot, the far shot, is shooting in the exact same location as the first shot. So that near first shot might not be perfectly center, and that's fine. We'll get to that in a minute. But right now, we just want to make sure that the beam is shooting parallel right down the baseline. And to do that, the second burn really needs to be in the same exact location as that first burn that we took. So we're going to have to make an adjustment here. That beam has to come down, and it has to go a bit to the right so we can get it in the same spot as that first shot. All right, this is mirror one, and these are the adjustment knobs on mirror one. The first thing we want to do is we want to figure out which way we need to make the adjustment. Now, if you look at our previous burn, it was up high and it was over to the left. So that means I'm going to have to use both knobs. The way you turn the knob will control which way the beam turns. So if I turn the knob on the right clockwise, the beam will go to the right. If I turn it counterclockwise, the beam will go to the left. In our situation, our beam is a little bit to the left, so I'll be turning this clockwise in a minute. Same with the bottom knob here. Our beam is a little too high, so we'll have to bring it down low. It's the knob on the bottom. If I turn it clockwise, the beam will drop low. If I turn it counterclockwise, it'll raise up. So that's the way to remember the methodology behind these knobs. We're going to just make a slight turn. This is a very fine-tuning adjustment, so you don't do, we don't need a whole lot of motion here. The first thing we want to do is unlock these brass knobs behind it. These are just put in place to lock our settings so that they don't move. To unlock the adjustment knobs, you'll need to use both hands. Hold the red adjustment knob with one hand. Using the other hand, turn the brass knob counterclockwise. That should unlock it and now we can make the adjustment. Do the same down here, since we've got to do both. I'll hold the knob steady, and then I'll unlock it by turning the brass knob counterclockwise. Now both knobs are unlocked, and we can go ahead and adjust them. First, let's start by bringing the beam over to the right, because we saw that the second shot was a little bit over to the left and high, so let's start by bringing it to the right. Again, this knob is situated on the right, so if I want to move the beam right, turn it clockwise. Now that looks about right. I'll go ahead and adjust now the bottom knob. So I will turn the bottom knob clockwise and that'll just drop it down a little bit. And that should overlap our first burn mark. Now keep in mind, this is just a rough adjustment. We're really just kind of eyeballing it now. We won't know if we need to adjust it some more until we take another burn shot. So now with our new piece of tape on there, we're gonna hit the pulse button again.
And now we're going to remove the target and compare to our first picture and see if we have to move any more. So now we're going to go ahead and compare that shot to our first shot again. Um, and it's looking a lot better. I did overcorrect it a hair to the right. As you can see, uh, I, I went a little too far with that adjustment. But the good news is the beam doesn't have to come down anymore. It's at the same exact height as the first shot. I just have to turn that knob on the right a hair uh, to get it back over to the left a little bit. Uh, and that's going to be a counterclockwise adjustment. So let's go ahead and do that. Tape comes off. And we're going to put a new piece on. And again, it's, uh, we're really close here. I just want to make sure again that the second shot is overlapping or shooting in the exact same spot as the first shot. So I'll put a brand new piece of painter's tape on, put the target back onto the mirror two bracket, get it nice and flush. And I just have to make a real slight adjustment to that knob on the right. Uh, that's going to be a counterclockwise turn because I want the beam to come over to the left. So we'll do that. Just a slight little adjustment. That should do it. And we'll take one more burn mark and that, that should be right on point. So I think that should do it. Let's just check. Again, we're comparing to our first picture here. And they should match up. And they do. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. If it's not perfectly centered in the target, that's not important right now. What we want is just to make sure that this second far shot is shooting in the exact same spot as the first near shot don't have to be centered on the target, they just have to be in the same spot in relation to each other. Now while we're looking at this, it's also important to understand that we don't want the beam to be too far out of the baseline, meaning if we're wildly off the center of these targets, you're going to want to report that to one of our techs to see if there needs to be an adjustment made to the beam path, which is the second part of what we're adjusting here. So before we go any further, I'm going to go ahead and take another picture of this second shot, just for my records. That way, if I do end up talking to tech support, I'll have something to show them. Now that mirror one's aligned, we'll just want to make sure that we lock those adjustment knobs again. We don't want them coming out of position after we've gone through the entire machine and aligned everything. So same as before, we'll just go over to the back. We're going to hold the adjustment knob and we're going to turn the brass knob clockwise this time until it locks. Now, I'm holding the adjustment knob from turning, and I'm going to give the brass knob a little snug turn. That's it. If I start torquing down the brass knob, it's going to change my alignment, and we don't want that. So you just need it to be snug. Same with the bottom one here. I'm going to turn it clockwise. And just at the end there, I'm going to make it snug. So once the knobs are locked, uh, it's probably a good idea to just check one more time, do another near or far shot, just to make sure that you didn't move anything when tightening up those knobs. Okay, now we've got mirror one aligned. Let's move on to mirror two.